Is it crazy to say that new Auburn wide receiver Coy Moore is primed and ready to have a better season than Kobe Hudson from a year ago? Maybe, but I'll tell you why I don't think it's crazy at all on today's Locked On Auburn. Well, Zach, I, I actually just finished crushing some chicken farm, and I am, I am freaking ready to rock and roll. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby. And thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Very quick programming note. We're recording this before game two of the Corvallis Super Regional. So Auburn may be heading to Omaha. There may be a game tonight, regardless of when that series is over. Expect a special baseball only episode either Monday afternoon or Tuesday afternoon. This week's going to be crazy because instead of joining us on Tuesday, it will be a Charlie Monday as Auburn message board legend Charlie Five joins us. And us just kind of laying out the, the framework of this episode, I think we're going to disagree on a lot of things. And I so think too. that's fun in the it's middle of it. It's going to be a ton of fun. All right. So I think Coy Moore, the new wide receiver for the Tigers from LSU, is primed and set up to have a better season this year than Kobe Hudson did for the Tigers last season. Wow. And so, okay. I can't wait to hear this. Let's you hear disagree. it. You disagree based on that. All right, so let's set some groundwork here. Kobe okay. Hudson last year had 44 catches for yep. 580 yards in Auburn's offense. He led Auburn in receiving. Yes. For comparison, last year, Coy Moore uh, in 2021, five catches for 71 yards. Obviously, the sample size is drastically, drastically different. Sure. Um, you look at analytics, they're kind of similar um, as far as like reception percentage. Kobe Hudson was targeted 77 times. He caught 44 of them. That's a reception percentage of 57.1. And if you look at what Coy Moore did, he was just targeted just nine times. I mean, once again, we're talking about a massive sample size differential here. Targeted nine times, five catches, 55% um, reception percentage. There. So, I mean, not too off. Just obviously Kobe sample size massively, massively larger here. But when right. you look at the efficiency of them taking care of the football and not wasting possessions, Coy Moore was significantly better off in his smaller sample size. He had a drop grade of 76.3, according to Pro Football Focus. Kobe Hudson had a drop grade of 50.6, one of the worst on the team last year. Okay. And then Kobe's fumble rating was 23.7, which was worse on the team last year. And Coy Moore's is a 72.8, which is a really, really good grade. Once again, we don't know what that'll look like when you multiply it times 10, but it's supposedly supposed to account for that hypothetical when you look at the analytics and what pro football focus does. But I don't think it's I, I don't think when you look at comparing Kobe Hudson last year to Coy Moore last year is what we actually have to look at, Charlie Five, when we're predicting Coy Moore to break out. Because Agreed. Kobe Hudson was given an opportunity. But what did Kobe Hudson look like before he was given an opportunity? Because I think we both agree Coy Moore has not been given an opportunity to really be a key piece of an offense. He was not at LSU. Right. And when you look at what Kobe Hudson did in 2020, and I think it's similar because in 2020, it was a different offense for uh, for 2021, so they had to transition. Same with Coy Moore last year, having to transition to a new system here. Sure. Um, seven catches for 77 yards. And when you look at it, five catches for 71 yards for Coy Moore, I think it's a similar situation. The numbers are very similar, and I think when Coy Moore is given an opportunity like Kobe Hudson was last year, I think Coy Moore is in a better situation to take advantage of. Okay, so from the numbers guy aspect, I, yeah. I get I get your argument. Okay, yeah. I get your argument, and if if the transitive property works, you sh you you have you have a pretty good argument. Okay. I look at I look at athletic ability and like top end stuff that that Kobe has that that Coy just doesn't. 
like okay. coat, coat, the lateral movement, uh, in and out of breaks, uh, being able, uh, I'm probably even top end speed, sure. um, that Kobe had the times that he could get open. That, that was, that was a big, uh, that was a big aspect of his game, being able to do stuff after the catch. Mm. Um, I don't see if if Coy if Coy has a better statistical is that what we're going by is it statistical season you think he could have a better statistical season or just yeah yeah I, I think he goes over five what did we say five hundred and eighty yards yeah I yeah. think he goes over that I, I hope he does I hope he does um, yeah, me too. but I, I see I see Coy as being sort of like a you know five catch four four or five catches for. 30 or 40 yards type type receiver. Now, if that if that translates for the whole year, I guess he pro, he possibly could go, you know, he possibly could go o- over that. Um, but uh the the I, I just so, don't so see if the, he gets 40 yards a game, that is 480 yards. Yeah, that's close. That's close. Yeah. That's close. So I just but the, you're to be able to I mean if you pop if you do that and pop one. I mean, you're right up on it. You should be, yeah. Doing a bowl game, you know. Yeah, but I'm doing average, so like I think there's going to be some where he's not going to have many. There may be some where he has 70 yards, but uh, I think on average, uh, I just I think he's going to be limited physically as opposed to Kobe. I think Kobe, if Kobe could have been around this year, I think you could have seen a possible thousand yard receive reception year uh, for Kobe. I think he's he had that much potential. He just struggled. Sometimes with uh, he struggles sometimes with drops. That's just that's just his deal. And I think the only I don't I don't believe in the uh, believe in this uh, thing. The only real thing that helps you catch better is just repetition, like repetition, chemistry. Uh, that's that's really the only thing. Um, and, and another thing is like what kind of quarterback play are we going to have? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, we're all just assuming it's going to be. It, it, we're assuming that if you take the lows away from Bo, we're we're assuming that 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 um, what's his name? Our, we're thinking Calzada is going to eliminate the lows that Bo has. But like, where does that where does that leave you? Where, where does that leave us in the middle? And and will we have even have that much production from the wide receivers? And then tight ends are going to suck up a ton of receptions. Yeah. I feel like this year, uh, running backs should suck up a lot of receptions. But on the flip side. I do think we're going to have to throw it more because I just don't think we're going to be able to run the ball. Yeah, I also think Auburn will be better at getting first downs this season, um, sure. which means you stay on the field longer. Um, and, and we'll see we'll see how they do as far as if they get better or not in the red zone. But I, I do think this roster will be better at moving the chains on a more consistent basis than last year. Do you think do you, do you think Auburn's offense will be better this season versus last season? Uh, it's so hard to tell. It's so hard to tell. I would, I, I'm, I would say, man, it's really hard to say. I'm, I would, I'm just expecting a similar output is what I'm expecting. And okay. hopefully, hopefully, if you're healthier, which I think the output last year up until Bo got hurt was was not bad. Was not bad. It wasn't ideal all the time, but probably could have won us a couple of games down the stretch. I mean, it was predictable, um, right? I mean, we were. Yeah. Eight- when Bo, when everyone was healthy, I mean, we were able to kind of predict what. I mean, was there was there a game where we were a little surprised by, you know, the offense one way or the other? I maybe expected a little bit more against Penn State, but I think that was more of me being wrong about Penn State than being yeah, wrong about yeah. our offense. Um, I thought the I, offensive I did, output I did maybe a little bit more against LSU, but not much. Like maybe yeah. a touchdown, you know? Yeah. You know, Arkansas and Ole Miss. I thought both of those games were great. Were were probably overachieved. Or, now, or now Ole Miss, it was all in one half. I probably would have expected that whole output across the whole game. Yeah. Um. So it it, it felt a little weird leaving it, but yeah, 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 totally. Probably about the so. I think right now I'm expecting something around the same. Possibly could be, and and I hate to go this way, but like I I just try to think of this logically the same or maybe a tad worse because I'm thinking this is my thinking. Nothing was done in the, the off season to help you be able to run the football with, from an offensive line perspective. We have two outstanding backs, like right. top t- probably the top two tandem in the SEC. Uh, unbelievable. But we could not run the ball in short yard situations. We couldn't run it when we had to run it. What I don't changed? Think we tried as much. 
Yeah. What did, what, what changed? What changed? Is it, is it, do we just get better because it's another year? Maybe uh, another year in the system, maybe. Um, and then pass blocking uh, over well over half of our sacks last year that were allowed came when, after Bo was out. Mm. So the last four games of the season. So uh, when you don't, when you don't have a much of a mobile quarterback, you know, what, what does the offensive line really look like? So, I, I, I don't know. Um, year two, year two in any system is, should be a step up, regardless yeah. of the the roster situation. So um, that's why I'm just kind of hanging with. I'm hoping for a similar output, and I think if we have a similar output, our defense is good enough that we could win eight games. Maybe so. Maybe just more. To, just to circle back and put a bow on the Coy Moore Kobe Hudson conversation. Yes, you're not buying it. You're you're, you're not buying the argument. I don't think no, I'm not. I don't think Coy will have a statistically better year. I think he'll have a good year, and I think we'll be happy with his production. But I don't think he'll be a better. I don't think he'll have a better year than than Kobe had last year. And I'm I, honestly, it'd be fun to see. I, I bet Kobe. I, I would love to see what he does this year at UC, UCF. He'll have a good opportunity. There's no he'll question about a, it. He'll have a great opportunity. I, I want to hear your thoughts. Comment on uh, on YouTube if you're watching, or uh, hit us up on Twitter if you're um, if you're listening or, or in the Locked On Auburn Discord. I'd love to I'd love to hear some thoughts about this conversation. Coy Moore this year versus Kobe Hudson last year. Am I crazy? Let me know. We got a ton of response to Friday's show. The conversation uh, that we had with Jay Ferg about each position is his roster better than it was a year ago. A ton of response and pretty much unanimous across the board. I want to talk about that in just a moment. Today's show is brought to you by betonline.net, your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. A ton of fun golf, which Charlie Five is the expert on that over the weekend. Uh, obviously, an incredible weekend of college baseball with all the super regionals. You can get in on all of the action at betonline.net. Also, the... Uh, Hockey finals for the Stanley Cup start this week. If you're a hockey person or if you just watch hockey, you know, in, in the postseason, Bet Online makes watching all of these games so much better. So check it all out at Bet Online where the game starts. All right, Charlie Five. Friday, Jay Ferg and I talked about each position group and if it got better or worse now versus a year ago. And the big picture question, obviously, was is Auburn's entire roster better now than it was a year ago? And we put up, you know, promotional stuff on social media. Then obviously, uh, you know, po uh, people also, you know, responded to that as well as commenting on the YouTube stuff. And we had fans across the board, including players. Grant Loy commented on YouTube. Marcus Harris commented on Instagram. Wow. There are a few folks that, uh, that, that interacted when we put it up as a story. And everybody's saying significantly better across the board. Are you buying that? Well, I, it's hard for me to say yes when we don't even have a full roster. How can we have a better roster than last year when we don't even have 85 scholarships, like 85 scholarship athletes? That's right off the top. I think I think there's a good argument that maybe the we've talked about this the first starting 11 on offense and the starting 11 on defense, there's probably a good argument that you could make that it's better that the depth situation though, 23 uh, through 85. That's, that's the question. Tough. It's yeah. tough, but that, that was bad last year too. So like, it's not like, it's not like this is something that just all of a sudden has happened. Like that's something that is going to take a while to, to be able to fix. But uh -huh. I mean, I, I can listen to that argument, and I think we're very talented starting maybe one and a half deep, if that makes sense. Across a very good position, right? I mean, yeah. we probably like linebackers and defensive backs, maybe yeah. running back. Um, yeah. And maybe defensive even back, honestly. But, yeah, I mean, there, there are some position groups where it's just like, man, if two guys get hurt, I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, yeah, we're in trouble. Yeah, and then you, and also if you kind of look at who's leaving next year, and then what yeah. comes back behind and, that? And that's, and that's hard. That's horrifying. That's horrifying. not the conversation, though. That's not. Yeah, the no, no. But I, that is part of that is part of when you're talking about the whole roster because that's who's going to be. You know, that's gonna, who's going to be here next year. But yeah, I mean, I would just simply say, I would just simply say, it's hard for me to see how you could get better 
from a raw as a raw from a roster standpoint from one year to the next when you have less players. Does that make does that make sense? Is that fair? Yeah. No, it, uh, totally. It, and I remember talking to a coach um, a few days after Auburn lost to South Carolina. Yeah. And I, I just asked this thoughts. I'm like, what do you think is going on at Auburn? And he's like, man, they're one. Their guys one through twenty can compete with anybody in the country. But after 21, through the rest of the roster, it's like teams like South Carolina and Mississippi State, over the course of 60 minutes, that's how they beat you. And it's like you look at the the starters, and it's like Auburn is so much better than all these teams. Maybe put even Arkansas in there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, going into this season with all these, like, toss-up games, like when they go to Ole Miss, they go to Mississippi State, they host Arkansas, you host Texas A&M, and it's like – one through 50 with all these guys that play, like I think their roster is significantly better. Maybe not one through 22, like we said, but when you look at the SEC and just the week in, week out, brutal runs of this, this season that we're going to have as far as difficulty goes, it's really, really tough to ignore it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. I'm with you 100%. It's a grind, and you got to you got to have guys. Yeah. I want to get your thoughts, though, Charlie Five, just like we did with uh, with Jay Ferg on Friday. Your position groups that you think are better, your position groups that you think are worse from a roster standpoint this season compared to last season. All right, here on Locked On Auburn. Before we jump into that, though, I want to encourage folks to join the Locked On Auburn Discord. Constant conversation happening around Auburn sports and anything relevant. It's a ton of fun. We went over 900 members last week. Come on and join us. We'd love to hit 1,000 members before the start of the season. Charlie Five, as, let, let's do this a little bit quicker. Um, yeah. I'm just going to name a position group, and I want your just raw reaction. Is it better or worse? And just a quick reasoning, quick tidbit why. I'm going to put you on the spot on all these. Okay. Um, quarterback, better this year or last year? Okay, the room or just the position in general? The position group. Okay, I'll say as a position group, much better. I think we have a better freshman. I think we have a better sophomore. Uh, I think we have um, a, another year of uh, a guy that's been in the system with TJ, and I think Calzada is a top half of the quarter, uh, top half of the SEC, possibly potential in quarterback. Okay, all right, uh, running back better, just because those guys are freaks. And uh, last year, uh, Hunter was a freshman. Uh, he's up over well over 200 pounds from, from what I understand and looking like an absolute monster. Then you add in Damari Alston. Um, now you really truly have three dedicated, like three SEC level running backs uh, on the roster at once. Is Austin the third guy in your mind right now? I would say so. Pro he's probably going to end up being the third, the third guy. Okay. If I had to guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, wide receiver. Uh, the same, maybe the same. I would just say, I would just say same. I don't. I don't, I don't so you know. You lose. You lose Demetrius Robertson. You lose Kobe Hudson, and you lose yeah. Elijah Canyon. Yeah. Um, and you you get you get uh, some talent Worsh. from the upside. You get yeah. uh, Clay Moore, and you get Dezalen Warsham. I would say they all kind of wash out. I don't think, okay. in my opinion, I know that's kind of a cop out, but the, the, to me, it's just it's just a not super inspiring, just like it was last year. I guess. Yeah. Got it. And then uh, offensive line to round out the offense. There's two. You got tight ends too, but uh, uh, offensive line. I would also say same. I, I'm not. I'm not inspired that they're there. I mean, it would just be. But you're not encouraged by, you know, three of the five starters coming back with another guy that has some starting experience that doesn't no, fire you up. Not okay. at all. <laughs> Unfortunately. No, I I get it. Some yeah. folks love it. Some folks are like, this is the same story a year ago. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll, what's going to be different? Um, then tight end. I, I think everybody's going to agree that that's. A much it should better be player. better. It should be better. Be, I mean, that first year in the system, getting better and better. Uh, I think the room as a whole is is going to be better next year. Yeah, yeah. Even even though Landon King maybe be might be in there, maybe across the hall of the tight ends, then you bring in Michael Riley Ducker. Everybody loves that kid. Too. If they do what Landon, if they do with Landon King, what you know the legends are uh throughout spring and, and whatever and put him out at wide receiver i might say that the wide receiver group would be better okay if that's if he's utilized that way all right switching to the defense defensive line that that's better than a year ago right sure sure 
Totally, totally. I mean, there's not much to say. You got NFL, two NFL dudes that are that are coming back, um, uh, and then you added some some big uh, some big bodies and some guys that that really popped last year, like Marcus Harris, that could do that could. They're totally. just going to get better. So I would say better. Yep. Edge situation is, is kind of similar to tight end, just, as far as immediate season. Now, when you look past this upcoming season, I think you can start to get a little concerned, but. Um, yeah, and the depth is not there really. I mean, you you got Echo and you have Hall, and then um, the kid the kid from Roanoke, I forget his name. Um, Dylan uh, is, is his name is Dylan, it Dylan? Yeah, Dylan Brooks. Yep, Dylan and Brooks. Then, uh, yeah, and then it appears Joko Willis will be the fourth edge yeah. guy. Which that I like that. I love it actually. Yeah. Um, especially if he doesn't have to play a whole lot this year, and then you know, could be a guy next year. I I like that. That's fine yeah. with me. Um, linebacker is interesting because. Yeah. You lose two of your top three guys, and then, but you get Papo kind of. You kind you get of get Papo, Papo back, back um, which you didn't really have last season. Yeah, you know you're you're super high on Cam Riley. Um, I'm I'm higher than I probably should be, given on you know I don't have a whole lot of you know information to back this up. It's just a gut feeling. I'm high on Eugene Asante, um, and then I've heard good things about Wesley Steiner. So I've heard good things about Wesley Steiner for years. We haven't really seen him play yet, but I think yeah. um, the, the linebacker situation, we're all just assuming it'll still be good, but I, I think it's going to be a really, really interesting position to watch. I would say, I'm going to say worse uh, by a little bit. Only reason I is think because I said worse on Friday too. I, think I, I mean, you're losing the S like the SEC's leading tackler for the last two years. I mean, the guy just. He was uh, he was he was just unreal, and, yeah. and, and to expect that production to just click back in, and uh, you know Owen, I love Owen. I think he's has, he's a freak. Um, this his his size sometimes maybe he, he seems to like he seems to be injury prone. Like, can he? What if he goes down? Then you're just completely raw. At the time there's times where Wesley Steiner looked good. There's times where he looked atrocious. Um, well, I, I love, like Cam Riley, and I like Wesley Steiner. I love Cam Riley. Under the assumption that Owen Papo is next to them. Yes. Yes. Now, if it's just Cam Riley and Wesley Steiner, like it was most of the spring, so at least they got reps in that situation. But if it's just those two guys for like 80% of the snaps when there's two linebackers, that's in, worrisome. I, I don't love that. Yeah. I just don't. Yeah. Um, I'm with you. Ready to be proven wrong because they have the physical ability to do it. It's just, it's just hard to replicate that SEC experience, right? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, corner, I think, is significantly worse. Just you lose an All America. I do think. I, I mean, this is sort of. I'm sort of being inconsistent. Um, losing Roger, uh, we we I said we lost to Kobe, and I said we're worse. We're losing Roger. There are some so many talented defensive backs on this roster, though. No question. There, there's so many, uh, and and people are. I mean, you you forget about um, you forget about the JUCO, the number one JUCO corner who. Um, for all intents and purposes, could be a one and done. Like people yeah, like they, love yeah. it. Yeah, they love it. Keontae Scott, they love this kid. Uh, great size, great length. Um, you add in DJ James, who DJ caught probably could have been the number two corner on last year's team. Like, and then you got Pritchett. There's there's just so many guys. It's like it's hard for me to think that they'll be worse just because they lost Roger, even though they're 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 also and they're all like the same size too. They're all <laughs> super long. I, I just I love the DB room. I love the corner room. I, I, uh, I do too. I, I like the safeties as well. They're just raw. But the um the later this week I want to do a show on like the five Auburn Tigers we're not talking about enough or yeah. like they we're forgetting. And uh, you just listed like all the potential starting corners except for Jalen Simpson, and like Jalen Simpson's yeah. totally on that I, list. Yeah, that's my bad. Oh, yeah, he's that's totally a, on that list, right? Totally. Yeah, you're, not he hear, be. you're not hearing a whole lot about him. So yeah, that's a great. That's a good point. Um, and then safeties, I, I think losing Smoke's a big deal. I said that it'll probably be worse than last year. Right now. Yeah, I would say worst, wash to worst. I guess maybe. Um, okay. Maybe you got guys that could play the ball down the field a little bit better, um, but maybe you're not quite as good in run support like like Smoke was or playing the ball in front of you. The dude could just close in front of him. Just when it got behind him, he just didn't know what to do. <laughs> wasn't very, wasn't uh, he struggled? But but yeah, I think um, they have the, the probably have the potential to be. I could see him being a maybe taking a little step back. Yeah. So for the folks out there that are like, yes, it's a no brainer. This roster is better. 
I hope you're right. I just I do too. I'm pulling for you. No, I, I am too. I am too. And there's ways <laughs> at every position for the most part, linebacker, I have a tough time doing it. And and safety, I have a tough time. No, I, I could talk myself into it for safety. With most positions where I'm like, eh, it's probably a worse situation going into this season than last season. Yeah. I'm able to talk myself into it. Like, I could see where folks are coming from. Like, I could talk myself into the offensive line clicking. I could. I don't think it's going to happen, but I could I, I could talk sure. myself into it. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm with you. Same with wide receivers. I kind of spent the whole, like, first 10 minutes of the show doing it with Coy Moore, right? Um, it's like, yeah, I, there's, exactly. there's a lot of it, like, where I can see it coming together. It's just when you look at it position by position right now, it's like, ah, there's just a few spots where I'm like, I, I think we're missing some stuff there. I'm with you. There's just a few key spots. And like I said, seven, you, you, it's hard for me to be on the, uh, it's hard for me to be on board with uh, that. It's going to be better when you don't even have a full roster. That yeah. that's, that's, that's tough for any, for any school. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. Hey, ton of golf going on, man. How can people yes. uh, listen to your show? Crazy, it crazy stuff happening in golf. The golf world, it, it's never been more interesting. It's never been more interesting. Uh, you can find us uh, today. Uh, the pod just dropped uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Dad Bod Golf Pod. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, the underscore Charlie underscore five is right there on the bottom. I'm in the Locked On Auburn Discord like every single day. We even have a right. golf channel in the Locked On Auburn Discord. It's true. Uh, tons of stuff. I can't wait to hear y'all's um y'all breaking down two different tournaments that happened this oh, week Super. and all the all the shots back and forth i can't wait oh it's so petty i love it petty with millions of dollars just being thrown around like it's nothing I, i'm all for it once again if auburn super regional wrapped up and they're headed to omaha uh we will have a special auburn uh, auburn baseball podcast drop early afternoon either today or tomorrow regardless of outcome this has been locked on auburn